morning. Can you hear us? I can now. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, an exciting weekend ahead um, for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Headed back to Indy, but the first time on the road course. So, um, obviously, Indy special in to you, you've won on the oval, but what would it mean to have the opportunity to win the inaugural um, road course race for the series? Well, I think when you look at, at any races period, uh, to win the first one, right, of, of any event is, is always a big deal. I think that's always super important. I think a lot of the drivers, a lot of the teams really put a lot of pressure on, the, on themselves, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to be able to do that. Um, but Indianapolis is, is Indianapolis and it, and it has a different um, atmosphere around it. Um, you know, the racetrack has so much history and so much um, standing in, in really world racing history that uh, to, to be able to go there, win the first one, win the inaugural race, I know it would be super special. You know, it, it's going to be very different. You know, I think we've all kind of gotten accustomed to what racing on the oval looks like, especially, um, you know, the cup side has been doing it obviously a lot longer than the Xfinity series, but even now the Xfinity series has kind of gotten into a rhythm. And, and so to change that up, it's going to be unique. Uh, especially with the format, you know, Indy cars there as well. Um, it makes it makes for a, a lot of challenges that we wouldn't normally find on a, on a, a typical race like that. So I think that uh, you know we're all we're all gunning for it. We're all excited about it. Looking forward to having some fun. All right, we're going to start with questions for Justin. Just a friendly reminder: you may use the uh, raise your hand option within the Zoom platform, or send us a message as well on chat, and we'll monitor that during um, the availability. So we're going to start with Dustin Albino. Dustin, go ahead with your question. Yeah, Justin, I'm curious. How would you gauge the 2020 season so far, given you've won a bunch of stages um, but might not have the results to show for it? Huh. Uh, I said it. I'm trying to think what race it was. <coughs> Excuse me. I said it after one of the races that, uh, I, you know, during my interview at the care center that uh, I think I'm the same as everybody else. I'm ready for 21 to or 2020 to figure out what it's going to do or or just be over. Um, you know, for us, we've had really fast race cars. You know, everybody at Junior Motorsports has done an incredible job. I, I look at not just our 17, but I look at all four of our cars at Junior Motorsports. We've we've excelled tremendously versus what I feel like we've had speed wise in the last couple of years. Um, the cars have been fun to drive. The team's obviously done a great job. And, and I do feel like that this format of no practice, no qualifying helps us a little bit. It, it, it you know, we've always kind of been good in, in that regard, but you know, to win the stages that we've won, to lead the amount of laps that we've led and to really have nothing to show for it um, is, is pretty disappointing. I mean, I, I I, I want to win as bad as anybody, um, but you know, on the other hand, I, I, I'm very blessed to do what I love to do, and, and and I don't ever take that for granted. So, you know, there, there's no win or no finish that's ever guaranteed in in this sport, and and uh, I know that, but at, at the same time, it's still disappointing. And you know, we we've obviously still got our work cut out for us. There's a lot of races left to go. We're going through a stretch right now of these summer months where I feel like fit my driving style really well, fit our team really well. So. You know, if we can if we can get some momentum back on our side, um, put ourselves in good position. I, I'd I'd love to think that uh, there's an opportunity to go win some races before the year's over. Thanks, Justin. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Claire B. Lane. Claire, go ahead. Thank you. Can you talk about Can you talk about what makes Indy tough and what you think that we will see as far as uh, challenge level? the level of challenge at Indianapolis this weekend for you guys and what you envision? Yeah, so, you know, I've, I've kind of gone back and studied some of the, the past races there with the IndyCars. Um, obviously, IMSA was there a, a number of years ago. We did kind of that doubleheader weekend uh, with IMSA as well. You know, it seems as though the biggest thing that I see from, from my standpoint and watching the onboard footage from, from Matt D's, um, Matt D's lap that he made it at Indianapolis, the biggest thing that I see is that it's really flat. You know, typically for us, um, you know, even Charlotte on the Roval has some elevation change. When you get to, uh, I guess that would be turn five, six, seven, somewhere in that range, there's some elevation change. You really are feeling like you can see the apex of the corners on a lot of these on a lot of these road courses that we go to. And when I looked at the video, I realized that it's it's 
pretty much perfectly flat. I mean, with the exception of maybe getting on to uh, in between NASCAR one and two, um, and then coming around and, and getting back onto the front straightaway, there's there's relatively uh, no banking. There's no there's no visual cues really to go off of. So I think that that's going to be the biggest challenge. Um, you know, I don't know, and we've not really seen until we get there what they're going to do as far as you know some of the other road course options that they have. I know they tested I think three or four different options with Matt Dean when they were there. So we don't know if they're going to barricade those off, if there's going to be the turtles, if there's going to be signs, you know, all of that stuff makes a big difference from a, from a visual aspect of a driver, you know, where to turn in, what references are you going to use? Um, and then you kind of add that to, I think we get two 15 minute practice sessions. So, you know, not a lot of time. And, and, and you're talking about, you know, turn one and, and getting into turn uh, seven, I believe, are going to be extremely fast. Uh, you know, we saw the speeds on those on those sections are going to be extremely fast. You, you high, high high speed heavy braking zones. So I think it's going to be really important to um, do a good job of, of those fifty minutes of really learning the racetrack, learning what you're up against, and and you know trying to do that quickly. And and, and you got to hope that your car is set up well um, because by the way, it looks pretty slick when the Indy cars run there. Uh, there's there's sometimes some crashes that you think, oh well, that guy's you know, not got any issues. He's, 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 his car's handling good. And then all of a sudden he spins out, you know, and, and they very, very rarely, relatively uh, never spin out compared to us uh, whenever it comes to slick racetracks like that. So when they're spinning out, we know that that we're going to have our hands full as well. So Claire, I think it's going to be uh, the guy that can learn the fastest is definitely going to be the one that I think is going to have the advantage of the race. And then do you expect a lot of carnage and do you expect that uh, the Xfinity racers will be, I guess, aggressive or, or pensive and careful initially? Uh, and do you expect carnage out of it just because of all that? I, I think practice is going to determine that. I, I really do. I think that you're going to see uh, if a guy feels like he's behind and, and needs to make up some big numbers, right? Like if you're a second or two seconds off the pace and you need to make up, you know, that time, um, sometimes it's easy to just get aggressive versus actually trying to figure out how to make that time up, right? Um, I, I don't know though. I think, you know, we've seen a lot of aggression. We've seen a lot of impatience uh, over these last few weeks. And I don't see that changing any, you know, there, there's, there's, a, a huge range of experience from from beginning to end of, of, of our series and I think that sometimes uh, that's a good thing and sometimes like last week at Pocono that's a bad thing right we, we saw way too many crashes way too early uh, disappointing because I, I thought that that race was a really good race you know once we got racing and, and were able to battle with each other it was a really good race but um, I'm hoping that you know the majority of this race is run under green and we're able to really push ourselves and our cars and battle it out versus, um, you know, what we saw at Pocono. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Casey Campbell. Casey, go ahead. Justin, good to see you again. Um, pra practice sessions are back, first time since the pandemic. Um, two 50-minute practice sessions. Are you excited about that? Well, I... I, I think it's an eel necessary, right? I, I've, I've kind of gotten used to the no practices. Um, is it better? I, I don't know. I can't tell you whether it's better or not. I think some of the races have been a little better. Some of them have been, uh, you know, a little bit slow starting like Pocono was last week. So I think it just determines uh, or depends on the, the, the racetrack. But, you know, for this one with, with nobody having experience, I, I don't believe, and I, and I could be wrong on this, but I don't believe that there's anybody on – on the racetrack that will have ever run a lap of the uh, the, the infield road course at IMS. So, you know, that, that changes the game big time, right? I mean, I, I think that, that, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of folks that are going to be uh, scrambling through this practice session. Um, but I, I think it's going to be good. I, you know, I think that they kept the practices relatively short, which, um, you know, as long as we can learn the racetrack in that short amount of time, I think it's a good thing because it it keeps with what we've kind of seen over these last you know handful of races. And you know, I think we'll see what I think we'll see what it does for everybody. If it if it if it's good and and at some point practices come back, that's great. If not, we'll keep going with the plan that we got right now and, and keep trying to make the most of it. 
And are you concerned about the extra rubber that's on the track? Because the Indy cars are going to race before you. Is that going to have any effect on on how you guys race and how you guys how you approach the race? So typically for us, uh, I, I think the race was actually put in the order that it was because typically for us, we don't have a whole lot of grip issues on their rubber, but when they run on ours, so I, I'm going back to some double headers with trucks and IndyCar at, at Texas, I believe. Yeah. Um, maybe gateway when they run, when, uh, the, when the Firestone goes onto the Goodyear rubber, it tends to have some, some trouble kind of meshing to that that compound right so so their tire seems to be a little bit softer so for us it's really not a a huge deal um you know you're gonna have to really watch the rubber now, now one thing that will be very interesting is i don't believe that an indy car and a xfinity series car will race the same line i think there's going to be some some differences in in the line that we take you know obviously with a stock car we can we can use the curbs a lot more we can do certain things that they can't in an indy car uh, but they can also turn a little bit sharper than we can. You know, they're able to, to they're able to have a little bit more grip and and run a lane that we're maybe not able to. So I think the real question is going to be is going in and out of the grip, um, if or going in and out of the rubber. Excuse me, if if we're, you know, if, if we see a, an uptick in grip or if we see a, a decline, uh, you know, making sure that we're we're crossing over those spots in the right spot uh, to 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 benefit us, not hurt us. And and I think the practice is going to be important. Um, you know. But I think that, that understanding what that rubber is going to do to our tires is going to be more important. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Any final questions for Justin before we um, let him go? All right. Looks like that's all the questions we have. Um, thank you for joining us today. We wish you the best of luck this weekend. And uh, we'll see you Saturday in Indy. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for everybody joining in this morning.